Do you have a need for reliable, cost-effective web hosting for your blog, business or personal website? If so, then look no further than CheapHost UK. CheapHost UK's basic plan starts from just 58 pence per month. That's 9.99 a year. Say goodbye to unreliable hosting and support. CheapHost UK was built to not only provide reliable hosting, but also to provide customers with a support system every day of the year. And if you're in need of a little bit more, Cheap Host UK premium packages start from just £1.41 a month or £16.99 per year, complete with a free .co.uk domain. New customers can also take advantage of an extra 10% discount when purchasing any new hosting package or domain name from Cheap Host UK. Use discount code SHEEP, that's S-H-E-E-P, to get an extra 10% off. For reliable, cost-effective web hosting and domain names, look no further than Cheap Host UK. Full details and an affiliate link are in the description to this video. Hello there, everybody. A very warm welcome. You're watching Wi-Fi Sheep live here on YouTube with me, Tom. We don't normally come live, but breaking news uh, from this morning is a brand new Raspberry Pi product, the Raspberry Pi 02W. I saw this this morning, uh, very early this morning, actually. It dropped in my email box and still blurry I didn't even know what it was. I just like, whatever it is, click buy, bought it without knowing, and then had to go and do my morning chores. For those of you who don't know, I do farming and small holding on the side. So my morning always consists of dealing with the animals. Went out, dealt with the animals, came back, and then spent the rest of the morning trying to figure out what exactly this is all about. So we have a brand new Raspberry Pi Zero, and finally, it's an upgrade on the original. I remember doing a video about, I think it's two, three years ago now, where I had a rumor that there was actually going to be a brand new Raspberry Pi board, uh, or bad, brand new Raspberry Pi Zero board rather, an upgrade that was going to use the Raspberry Pi 3 processor. Um, now, of course, nothing happened, and I thought, okay, maybe that was um, someone having me on a little bit. But here we are, we've now finally got an upgrade, and I have to say, personally, it's actually rather welcome. I've been spending the morning just trying to collect some information together and some thoughts so I can actually tell you something remotely different or interesting to everybody else in the social media sphere that will be talking about this and has been all this morning. Um, so I've got a few points we'll bring up, but first, let's have a look at the board itself. So this is the press photograph from the Raspberry Pi Foundation. And yeah, it's a pretty standard uh, Raspberry Pi Zero uh, in the form factor. And that was one of the things they said in their press release is it's described as a slotting replacement for the old PCB. So because it's a slotting replacement, you can't change the form factor, the size, or where any of the ports are, or what the ports actually are, and I'll come back to that because there was I was thinking about the USB power, which, as you know, for Raspberry Pi 4 and 400, has now switched to USB C. Here on this model, being a brand new model, it's reverted back to the original micro USB. Now, I kind of get that because it's got to be backwards compatible, which means it has to just slot into the existing infrastructure, uh, so you can't go changing ports. Um, it's an interesting one. But there it is, um, and we have a brand new piece of Raspberry Pi silicon. I just want to draw your attention to this fantastic blog that's currently up on the Raspberry Pi website. And I've just scrolled down here to the specifications so we can go through that together. So it's a Broadcom BCM2710A1 quad core. 64 bit processor, it's an ARM Cortex A53 and it's clocked to 1 gigahertz. Interestingly, if you read this blog, and I will post the link to it in the description of this video, if you're watching me live right now, unfortunately it's not there, I didn't get time to put it in, but I will, once I'm off air, I will sort of tidy up the edges to this video. Um, 
Very interesting about how they've developed this chip. So it's a new process. When I looked at the specs this morning, I thought I don't recognize that chip name. And I didn't because we've not seen it before. It does use the Raspberry Pi freeze die. So that's like, if you like, almost like the mold of the chip. Uh, but it's had a few things added, but they've also taken out some of the RAM. So this thing is shipping with 512 megabytes of RAM, as opposed to the normal minimum of a one gig that we've all got used to. So it is a powerful chip, don't get me wrong, but it has half the RAM. I'm, I'm beginning to think that might be an issue for some people. I'm not sure. Um, let's just move on. So we've got the uh, while we've got the wireless connection, we've got the Bluetooth, and then of course we've got the one X USB two interface that we've all seen. The micro SD slot, mini HDMI, uh, composite video is present on this board. Uh, you have to access it via pins. Uh, so you've got to solder your own port on, etc. Uh, and it's going to be capable of outputting a uh, maximum resolution of 1080p, uh, which is basic standard high definition. Um, yeah, so fantastic blog, actually. I haven't been able to go through it fully, so I don't understand if the removal of the one gig from the chip is commercial reasons or technical reasons. Not sure at the moment, but still interesting blog so um yeah let's just go back and have a look at the board again now it mentions that it's a 64-bit chip which is fantastic news um however i don't know if that means that some 32-bit only operating systems may no longer be able to run it doesn't specify if this new piece of silicon being it's based on an existing chip die can actually support 32-bit running i say that because of Risk OS, which, as you know, we're a bit of a fan of here on the channel. It's not going to run out the box. If you buy one of these for tomorrow, it's not going to run out the box. Uh, it won't support it straight away. If this chip only supports 64-bit running, which will be the very first Pi chip currently to do so, uh, it won't run at all. That I don't know. I highly doubt it. I reckon it, it's capable of dual switching because currently all Raspberry Pi models, including the 4400, can dual switch back to 32-bit mode. I would be surprised if they've taken the 32-bit capabilities out this processor, but we won't know until I've actually got one to try. So the processor itself is, although it's a Broadcom chip, it's been designed by the Raspberry Pi Foundation. That's why we've never seen it before. Uh, kind of in a similar vein to the uh, Pico uh, microcontroller board that we saw earlier in the year. And that's interesting because lots of rumour, lots of rumour about the forthcoming or up and coming Raspberry Pi 5 actually using their own custom silicon. So it's no surprise that they've gone down that road. It's still a Broadcom pattern, if you like, but... Um, yeah, so that's interesting. Also, they state they're made in South Wales. Now, I'm not sure if the original Zeros were made in South Wales or not, but South Wales is basically the main Raspberry Pi factory. It's a Sony factory. I'm hoping that this means that we might not actually have to deal with uh, restricted supply. So when the original Pi Zero came out, uh, everyone wanted them. You couldn't get hold of them. And then if you wanted to buy them in any quantity, well, you actually couldn't because every supplier, official supplier that is, uh, limited you on the amount you could buy to one per customer. At the moment of time of ordering this morning, bearing in mind I was half asleep, it was still one per customer. I'm generally hopeful that maybe restrictions on this might be lifted, but it's kind of hard to say. Um, so uses, let's talk about uses. Well, obviously anyone doing anything with the Raspberry Pi Zero currently is in most cases going to welcome this upgrade. Personally, I'm thinking uh, the Pi um, Retro Pi. I nearly said Pi game then. Retro Pi users for a uh, video game emulation. Those that have built those little um, Game Boy clone units that use the um, uh, Pi Zeros as handheld devices. The only snag was on the original Broadcom architecture. They weren't powerful enough really to run PlayStation One or Nintendo 64. Who remembers with the original Raspberry Pi way back in 2011, 2012, the painful. Um, experience of trying to run Super Mario 64 on a 700 megahertz chip and you've got heat sinks and fans trying to get the thing to run faster and it just wasn't having it. And then of course the Pi 2 came along and that began to solve our problem. So 
maybe finally we can see custom kit built handhelds that can actually run N64 stuff uh, smoothly. So that's great. There's going to be benefits for people there. Uh, obviously, if you're trying to use the Zero in any kind of desktop capacity. Now, who remembers our video where we tried to use the original Zero as a desktop? It's one of the most popular videos here on the channel at the moment. Uh, there will be a box appearing on the screen somewhere about now when I get back to tidying this video up to uh, link you to that video. But basically, we try to use it as a, a desktop system with kind of borderline success here and there. The official Raspberry Pi RS, or Raspbian as it was then, ran really, really slowly. Um, it wasn't really usable. But this should be fast enough, running on uh, all four cores. Uh, it should be fast enough as long as the RAM isn't an issue. Now, this also might mean that some other operating systems that have never supported the original Broadcom chipset used in the original Pis and the original Pi Zero could now run. I refer to the likes of Ubuntu and the Ubuntu Mate system that's always been supported for quite a long time from Raspberry Pi 2 upwards. That operating system I really like. We haven't covered it much here on the channel, but it's kind of really underrated, but a fantastic desktop user experience. So maybe this will now run. If it hasn't been ported already, I imagine it will be updated in the next two, three weeks, as long as the lack of RAM isn't a problem. And I have no idea if the Ubuntu Mate system can run on anything under one gigabyte. So that'll be something we'll need to find out. So, as I said, it should run much better. Um, the Raspberry Pi charger thing, so they've released a brand new charger for this system. Uh, in the kind of same style and format of the USB-C one they released for the 4 and 400. It still uses the micro USB socket because uh, it needs to be backwards compatible. I get it. I suppose part of me was like, well, if you're going to move to USB-C, it'd be nice if you moved everything over now. But on the other hand, you'll break backwards hardware compatibility with all those breakout boards and custom projects. And also, don't forget, industrial customers that are going to be using uh, the original Pi's and may want to now upgrade and take advantage of the speed upgrade. So you can't change things and then claim it's backwards compatible if the physical footprint of your unit has changed. Um, I think that's just about it, really. Uh, the price point is um, it's coming in at $16. Bearing in mind, this is not just a plain zero. It has the Wi-Fi Bluetooth capability. So it's a new Raspberry Pi Zero 2W without the header, still doesn't have a header on at the moment. Um, so it's coming in at $16. So I bought mine here in the UK this morning, about 14 pounds and there was two pound shipping. So it came to about 16 pounds for shipping. So for the US market, definitely I'll say under 20 US dollars for this board. It's a good price actually. And it's a good bargain because this board is gonna be fast, compact and capable of doing things. So there we go. I'd love to know what you think. So do drop uh, your thoughts in the comments below. I have one on order. It might be with me tomorrow. As soon as it is, we'll try and squeeze in doing a timing and review video to see what we can get to work. I do want to see if I can get Risk Arrest to work. However, I have a feeling that it will probably end up being for a while an unofficial patch like what we did here on the channel to get Risk Arrest Direct running on the Raspberry Pi 400. If you remember, it didn't run on that originally uh, or the 4 for that matter. So I did an unofficial patch here. So I imagine it will probably be the same thing as long as the new CPU does support 32 bit running. If you haven't done already, please do consider following me on Twitter. It's at Wi-Fi Sheep. That's at Wi-Fi Sheep on Twitter. And if you want to be super cool and support me, as well as gain access to exclusive video content downloads and much, much more, you can head over to our Patreon. It's patreon.com forward slash Wi-Fi Sheep. You can join from just one dollar. Uh, taxes and terms and conditions do apply.
If you haven't done already, please do consider subscribing to us here on Wi-Fi Sheep and click that notification bell for more content and a full review of the brand new Raspberry Pi 02W as soon as we actually have a board right here. Thank you for joining me live as well. Basically, this news broke this morning. I had plans for other video content to be recorded today, and I've had to scramble all this morning to get this video for you. I had no time to edit it, so it's just, you know what, we'll have to do it live. So here we are. Thank you for joining me, and I will see you real soon right here on the channel. Wherever you are in the world, have a great day. Bye for now.